Coming up on Push to Talk, the latest announcements ahead of E3 2019, our take on Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and of course, our E3 2019 predictions in bingo card format. All of that and more on today's show. This is Push to Talk, episode 27, recorded Saturday, June 8th, 2019. This episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just head over to audibletrial.com slash push to talk and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Then you just download a title for free and start listening. Welcome to our pre-E3 episode. I'm your host, Jan, alongside me with Joe and Laren. Bill is still out sick this week, even though he is probably working his butt off trying to cover EA Play and E3. We're recording this literally about an hour after EA Play. Uh, Their live streams took place this morning on Saturday, so we're going to discuss that a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the news that came out over the past few days, and then we're going to close out with uh, some of our E3 predictions. We all created some bingo cards that we talked about in the last episode, so we will Prepare for E3. By the time you're listening to this episode on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, uh, most of the Im- exciting E3 stuff will probably have happened. So you'll get to have a, a, a preview of what we think is going to take place, and you get to immediately see how wrong we were. But before we dive into all that, Joe, Laren, how has your week been? How are you guys doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah. How about yourself? Going okay. You know, it's, it's the beginning of my three-week summer vacation, and I'm incredibly excited it's the first time i've ever done that nice dang what is that and, sorry what is that the three-week vacation or just a vacation in general <laughs> so yeah, joe both. a vacation is when you don't work for a while and you don't go broke and you don't starve that's, is that a canadian thing or this is a canadian <laughs> thing yes we have <laughs> like mandated <laughs> mandated requirements for human health and well-being stuff like that wow um that sounds yes. amazing must be nice. Yeah. It is. I, I mean, and I, I didn't even plan it. I feel like the past few years, my typical vacations are centered around game releases. For example, last fall, I took a week off for the launch of Red Dead 2. Um, so people always ask me, like, Where, are you going anywhere nice? I'm like, no, there's a game coming out that I intend to spend a lot of time with. But this time, um, I didn't actually plan this around E3. It just so happened to be coincidental timing but it is good because e3 obviously coming up in a couple days and it's going to be so much information to consume it's it's already been a incredibly hectic week i feel like e3 is spilling over on all sides and you know i guess everybody wants to have their uh spot in the the, the, there's five 15 seconds of fame in the spotlight and you know i guess it's easy to get buried in amongst all the e3 stuff so these announcements keep sliding forward and, and further forward. So we'll discuss some of those. Uh, I guess we can kind of chronologically begin by talking about a little bit about Google's first Stadia Connect. This is, I guess, their it's their PlayStation State of Play. It's their Nintendo Direct. It's their whatever everybody else is calling it. So this took place on Thursday, I believe, or Wednesday. Your Wednesday, This past week. Wednesday. I don't know. I think, was it Thursday? I don't know. <laughs> I think it was it, all, it all blurs together, but the the big point, of course, uh, we never really talked much about Google Stadia because we relaunched the podcast just after that was announced initially. So this Stadia Connect, um, it was a pre-recorded thing, which I think is smart, actually. I'm not a big fan of these live things anymore, as I'll bring up when we talk about EA Play. But uh, um, they announced, most importantly, pricing, release dates, and a list of uh games that will be available on the service, as well as a little bit more about how the service itself works. Um, to start this off, Google Stadia, is that something that interests you, Laren? Start with you. Uh, yeah, it does. It sounds promising if it can be, um, you know, delivered properly. Uh, I was intrigued by the the membership or the subscription, because if you get, I think it's the premium bundle or whatever they're advertising, uh, it comes with three months of their subscription service, but also another three months for a friend, which I don't think other subscriptions have really done that. No, they call it a buddy pass, which is kind of nice. Yeah, so that that seemed pretty interesting. And it's actually, considering the premise of Google Stadia, it being sort of easy to get into, right? You don't need 
a lot of hardware. You can play it on your browser in Chrome. You can play it on a Chromecast. You can play it on the Pixel 3. Now, they mentioned the Pixel 3 specifically, so I don't know if it will work on other devices. I'm an iOS device user, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to do some of this stuff on like an iPad, for example. But um, a Buddy Pass is cool. You can give it to your friend that maybe wants to play games but doesn't have all the hardware already. Right. I think you can play it on anything that has like a Chrome-enabled uh, casting thing. So, mm-hmm. so I don't I don't know how that works for for Apple products. I don't have one. <laughs> um, but yeah, it should definitely widen the field a little bit to allow you to like not have to uh, worry about having a certain console to play with your friends and um, having to just play something solo that should really be played co-op. Uh, so looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah. What about you, Joe? Is that um, I know you. Mostly you play console games, but is Stadia something that would be of interest? Yeah, it's of interest in that I'm uh, curious, I think, more than I am like consumer interested. Like, I don't know that I don't necessarily see myself using this so much, but because, you know, there's a low barrier to entry, I think uh, I can confidently tell you that I'll, I'll be checking it out when it's when it becomes publicly available. But uh, after the uh, Thursday uh, stream, like the the predominant feeling I have is that this really is like the casual solution period because uh, whether you go uh, subscription or not, although I think the subscription, uh, the $10 a month is the uh, most digestible uh, option that they're giving you. I, I This is like quite literally the Netflix uh, version yeah. of gaming. And uh, just the, in the same way that you, you know, we have these like Hulu subscriptions, whatever, whatever you subscribe to and you kind of forget about it. And it's there when you think of it, I could really see some of my friends that aren't quite into gaming the way I am just having this in their back pocket to play that one thing that maybe they love, like, you know, NBA 2K or something, something like that. Mm. They love, you know, they love basketball. They're not a gamer, quote unquote, but this is a way to do that with a, like a very low price point. I, I, I think the service in general, it just kind of like solves that issue if it works. Yeah, and that's a good point because it does kind of, it, it really removes almost entirely that barrier to entry. And and the if it works is an interesting thing. I mean, I guess a lot of that will remain to be seen. There is, of course, a lot of skepticism around how uh, well streaming games over the internet in general will work. And I'm sure for some people it will work better than others. Um, Google did say that for their 4K 60 FPS 5.1 surround sound quality, uh, you need at least 35 megabits per second down, which seems it, it raises some eyebrows. It doesn't seem terribly high, but it also seems like that may not be enough. So again, a lot of that will remain to be seen what it actually turns out in practice. Um, watching 4K content on Netflix seems to be working just fine, but you know, again, is that the same? Is that really the same 4K as watching a Blu-ray disc, for example? Yeah, and what I was curious, uh, uh, what I was surprised they didn't mention at all, and I, obviously the bandwidth isn't comparable, but Netflix has a downstream only thing going on. Stadia yeah. is going to be both a downstream and an upstream thing. Um, obviously, the downstream aspect is way larger than whatever you know, whatever whatever sort of input you're sending to the server, but you know. That's where latency comes in. That's where your ping comes in. Uh, packet loss comes in. That's extremely important uh, to the extent that it's just as important. Like you have to have a solid, stable connection. Forget about the bandwidth. Forget mm-hmm. about the speed. You need to be plugged in Ethernet. In my opinion, mm-hmm. you got to be right next to your Wi-Fi, burning you, you know, burning cells in your head. Like there's like so many things to consider about your setup that um, maybe like uh, they do impact that that plug and play aspect that I think is important in getting that casual person. It really, you really do need to have like a ideal internet setup. Oh, we just, (laughs) Joe just disappeared. Speaking of (laughs) of internet things. There you go. So here, here is the exact reason uh, Stadia will not work in my, my household. I have (laughs) freaking gigabit internet and uh, I'm, I don't know, 16 feet away from the router. I don't know. It's it's a it's a it's a tall order, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the only hope here is that the one company on earth with the infrastructure to even be making the claims that they're making is Google, and you know, it's yeah. I wouldn't totally write them off, but I'll be surprised if this becomes like like a household like a like a common household gaming solution because it's a tall order, and it it could be you know there is definitely a difference between like experience some network latency watching a movie on Netflix because it can just buffer. And worst case scenario, 
you know, you experience a tiny bit of buffering. If you're playing a online shooter, um, buffering is no good. Like no. That, it, that can't happen, right? And again, I guess that will vary by the type of game. Um, some games, such as Baldur's Gate 3, which was revealed at uh, the Stadia Connect, we'll talk a bit more about in a second. Maybe in that kind of game, it is not quite as critical. You know, like a single player game, you can probably cache some of that data locally on this device. I don't know how much space there is, but you know, if you're playing The Division 2, for example, which is coming to Stadia, and you're doing anything with your friends, uh, you're doing a raid or something, man, any little bit of latency will mess that up real quick. So, Yeah, I, I think it's good to point out for the listener that maybe is, you know, you and I work in tech, and I think maybe there's a little bit more insight as to what's happening in the background here. But yeah, you can you can put on Black Mirror on Netflix and your Apple TV or whatever device you have can basically download the episode in the background and quote unquote, save it up as you play, Mm -hmm. right? That just simply cannot happen with a game. It is quite literally a stream uh, in in the definition of stream, meaning like whatever you're seeing is being sent to you pretty much that instant, that millisecond, and then it's over. There's no like, there's no backup jpegs to show you while it's buffering it doesn't work that way so it's just a it's a really big technical demand that they're uh it's not a small problem to solve um i'm I'm kind of glad that google has taken a stab at it because at some point somebody will solve this um and um, like you said i mean maybe google is a good candidate microsoft is going to be doing their cloud x service at some point i'm sure we'll hear more about that at e3 but uh it, it's coming. What's interesting is that it's coming to 14 countries this year and more of them next year. Uh, some countries that are sort of notorious for having, you know, that are f- sort of first world countries but have internet issues, such as Australia, are not on this first release list. So there's almost a part of me that's wondering what Google's saying, like, okay, let's focus on the countries we think will have the best experience and avoid certain markets where we know people are having issues with um ISPs, and a lot of that comes down to bandwidth caps. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, what's it like in the U.S.? Is unlimited data sort of the, the given, the norm? It is very much a fine print si- situation. When you purchase internet in America, you do not see any mention of like a monthly limit or anything, but one most certainly does ex- exist, and I've been on the receiving end of emails saying you need to throttle down for like watching mm. HBO or something like I was like, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, like they're thinking you're actually like there are sort of hidden abuse policies where they're like you're using too much, um, yes. more than we think you should, right? Even though we, you don't have a limit. Yeah, like I, I pay extra for unlimited bandwidth, and it's definitely a thing. Uh, somebody and I forget who was one of the the tech uh, sites out there did some math and crunched the numbers as to how much uh, bandwidth Stadia could use for you know X amount of gaming, and it's quite a bit, quite a bit. So yeah, I mean it's akin to. Uh, what it would take to download a game, uh, like a large full install of a game, like every so often. Whereas like you're just downloading a game once, like on my Xbox, I'm downloading 80 gigs of Destiny 2 one time. But if I'm playing Destiny 2 for the amount of time that people play Destiny 2, it's like you're downloading that game like, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 times, depending on how much you play. So it's like, it's definitely, mm-hmm. there's definitely an impact on your uh, on your internet usage that, isn't to be taken lightly because as we just mentioned caps are a real thing and if you didn't know that listener then it's just because you haven't hit it yet because they exist right. at least yeah. in the states so did either of you pre-order this the, the the stadia founders edition is the one that's available for pre-order now it's 129 us dollars it comes out sometime in november you do get um a controller a chromecast ultra three months of stadia pro that buddy pass that laren alluded to and the thing that that hooked me, and I hate to admit this, but you get to reserve your name on this system. Yeah. And that was, honestly, as dumb as that may sound, that was a selling point for me. Because I looked at that and be like, I, I want my name, so I'm going to get this. There goes Joe again. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but Laren, did you you mentioned this earlier. Did, did you pre-order yet, or are you just going to wait and see? Uh, I'm, I'm waiting, uh, mainly for financial reasons, too. I'm trying to figure out, you know, with all these game announcements and things, I got to partition out my funds a little bit uh but i am interested in the stadia maybe when it gets closer to release time i'll consider pre-ordering maybe i don't know um that doesn't mean i won't try to actually maybe get a subscription when the time comes even if i don't pre-order uh it does look promising uh ultimately they are still beholden to internet caps and internet companies trying to 
throttle people and whatnot. So that's like we were talking about. It's really unfortunate. Um, but I think anything that puts more video games in people's hands like like this and makes it more accessible is always a good thing. And it was a step in the right direction. So I'm interested in seeing how it all turns and out. One could also argue that it's good to push internet providers and, and better bandwidth yeah. and services because I feel like Netflix over time has certainly done that. I mean, if you go back five, ten years ago, internet ISPs, not only was the speed lower, but getting unlimited bandwidth or even you know hundreds of gigabytes of bandwidth was unheard of. Right. So as consumers want these services, I think it maybe does push the, the whole industry forward as well. So yeah, what I found more, interesting... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, the more reason we have to demand uh, no data caps and whatnot, um, the more yeah. internet companies are going to have to respond. There, there used to be a day that if you got a notice from your ISP about using too much bandwidth, you were doing something shady, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I, there were days where it was like, oh, okay, this person's clearly downloading some pirated games because this right. was before the days of, you know, 80 gig digital downloads that are completely legit now. Um, right, right, so right. It's, it's changed. Uh, yes, what I've I am seen not, them too. What I can't quite figure out is they're, uh, there's, they have a subscription service, Stadia Pro, that's nine ninety nine a month. And that includes some or all unclear games included in that. But you can also buy games like a la carte, mm -hmm. which seems odd that if you, that you would spend presumably $60 for a game that you can only stream. Yeah, I think they said that you would own the game, though. I don't know if that means that it'd be DRM free, um, but that their actual platform is a free service uh, if you wanted to buy the games individually. Uh, but if you opt into the subscription then you can access whatever they have in their backlog for free um, it, as yeah. part of it. Um, but then you wouldn't necessarily own the game for yourself, or I, I don't know the details either. But I've always wondered how developers and publishers are going to make money off of a $10 a month subscription um, for many games. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm excited about Stadia, but I have tons of questions. And I'm sure, you know, as the year goes on, we'll find out more. Uh, do you guys want to talk a little bit about some of the game announcement that they had at Stadia Connect? Because there was... There was sort of two things that stood out to me. One, Destiny 2 uh, talked a little bit about its new light edition, which is coming this September and will then be available in Stadia after. And it's essentially a free-to-play version of Destiny 2. Now, I know you guys don't play Destiny 2 very much. Joe, you said you did play it. You've, you've had your fill. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, this doesn't really get me excited because I already own Destiny 2. But... It is kind of a neat way for Bungie to try to get even more people to play it. It's essentially Destiny 2's first year content, uh, sort of the base content, all the some of the story stuff, all the PvP modes, um, free to play, and then you buy some of the add-ons afterwards to sort of catch up to the current time frame, which is not bad, because I can see it was somebody who might want to get into Destiny 2 now, you have to buy a lot of previous content to get there. So making that available for free is good, I think. It is good. It sounds like a good a good deal because I think people would know right away in the free version whether they'd want to keep going or not. Um, I feel like maybe that should have been how it was at the start, but, you know, circumstances couldn't allow for that. Um, Capital uh, R reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really keep up with Destiny too much, but it, it just from the sounds of it sounds beneficial for everybody. Yeah. Now, I've, yeah. The other the other game that they showed was they showed a new trailer for Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which we don't need to get into a whole lot. It's a game I'm excited about, and there'll there'll be more later. But it was kind of just shown, like by the way, this is one of the games coming. But the other game shown was Baldur's Gate Three, which we talked about last week about that logo, and we sort of speculated that it's you know it's either Divinity Original Sin Three or it's Baldur's Gate Three, and it turned out to be Baldur's Gate Three. And how excited are you guys about this? Ooh, I'm into it. Meant to it. I think it looks good. I, I don't have like a history with Baldur's Gate, um, but it does look interesting. And that cinematic trailer was just awesome. Joe, I think you do have a history with this, don't you? I do, more so. Uh, I, I remember playing Baldur's Gate 2 on uh, original Xbox, if, if I'm not mistaken. It's been um, a long time since yes. the last Baldur's Gate game. Yeah. Well, I mean, s such a long time ago that I rented it from Hollywood Video or something. <laughs> <laughs> Back when video rental stores existed. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, very fondly remembered it. And I think more what I'm, like, happy about or just, like, the, the reason this was, like, a satisfying reveal was because Larian's the best. And, like, them taking the mantle here is so appropriate, so uh, so fitting. 
it's almost like they're like they're being handed uh, an IP that I mean I have full faith that they'll they'll take to the finish line with like the utmost care. Um, I'm just really glad that that you don't see it too much. Like Obsidian was sort of like the the developer that got handed things to handle well, mm-hmm. and I and I like seeing I like seeing Larian get this because uh, it's a great IP. And they've proven that, you know, even especially recently, they they're knocking it out of the park. So uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty into it. There's a neat little video of Larian Studios talking about how they got handed the IP for this and how they they talk a little bit about how they grew, you know, from uh, I believe Divinity Original Sin was a Kickstarter project. So, you know, it's a small studio crowdfunding this and, and turning it into a success. And I think they said that it was it's always been their dream one day to build Baldur's Gate 3. But. They didn't actually have to ask for it this time. They came to them because they've had such great success with the Divinity series. Yeah, their uh, portfolio is na- is now speaking on their behalf. The entire Larian story, if uh, if anyone has like an hour and a half to kill, it might be no clip uh, documentary. Um, I'm sorry that I don't remember, but you know the Divinity Original Sin documentary on uh, YouTube, easy to find. It is a great watch, and it is qu- it is like. Seeing like a punk rock band become, uh, you know, a worldwide success. It's so cool. Um, and yeah, I'm really, I, I, I'm, it's easy to root for those guys. So I'm really happy and they deserve it. So I'm hoping it will have good co op support like uh, Original Sin 2 did because I want to play this game with you. We don't know when it's coming out yet. We really just know that it's coming out on Stadia mm-hmm. when Baldur's Gate 3 releases. So I imagine that's still some time off. Yeah, right. Um, and wouldn't it be cool and a great experiment uh, to play this together on Stadia, perhaps? Just a thought. Mm-hmm. Just a thought. Internet permitting. Internet yes. permitting, and it is not permitting right now, so we'll see. But it does it does solve that issue that we've talked about in the past where, you know, I'm mostly a PC player. I want to play games with Joe, who's mostly a console player. Um, and yes, okay, I could go and play something on my Xbox to play it on the same system. But wouldn't it be great if everybody can play the game the way that they like to? Whether that is in front of the TV with a controller, whether it's on their laptop in the yard, or whether it's in front of their gaming PC with a mouse and keyboard, right? And I think that's part of what Stadia wants to accomplish. Definitely. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's the future. It is the future. It's here. Crossplay. <laughs> well, actually, you know, the other thing that does is hopefully it makes crossplay m- more common even among the quote unquote traditional systems, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's actually one of the things Bungie announced on their live stream, uh, actually on the same day as the stadium, just like an hour after that, it was a busy day. And they talked a little bit about the future of destiny Two, And that new light free to play version was part of that shadow keep is their big fall expansion was the other part, but it was more so a discussion about how they're changing destiny Two. Now that they are free from Activision, and I do love how throughout their stream they had these little subtle not subtle kicks at Activision, where they're you know kind of like we couldn't do this in the past because of <laughs> you know things reasons, and so there were these little snide remarks, which I thought was was cool. It, they did kind of seem like uh, they there was a weight lifted off their shoulder, and I realized this is promotional material that they showed but still um somebody described it as bungie has that new single feeling (laughs) like somebody came out of a long relationship that they weren't happy in and i don't know it 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 seemed exciting they showed off a lot of new things coming to destiny 2 such as um i'm gonna butcher this but transmogrification uh basically the ability to change the look of your items from their stats abilities which has always been a thing because the guys i play destiny 2 with we we have this this ongoing thing where every time there's new content and we're leveling up we basically look like hobos or dumpster guardians because we're wearing these things because they provide the best benefits but they look like trash to us but we have no choice so you always have to have this choice between do i want to look good do i want to be functional so they're addressing some of that they're reworking pvp and they're bringing cross save to destiny 2 which will allow you to have your characters linked to one major bungie account and then whether you're playing on the ps4 the xbox the pc stadia in the future you know it will always save the same characters which allows you to move around Mm -hmm. and 
for a lot of players who started Destiny 2 on a console and eventually moved to PC or didn't move to PC because they didn't want to buy the game again, this now means that they can do that. And I think they managed to pull Sony into this at the last minute. And I have a feeling that Stadia's influence is already being shown uh, that Sony could no longer resist because <laughs> uh, they were clearly going to be the bad guys in this scenario where if everybody else said, yep, we can do cross save on our platforms, except for Sony, that's a bad look. Yeah, I was just about to ask how that was affecting Sony or if they had responded. So, From what I understand, but- it was like a last you know, day of type of thing. Mm-hmm. Because the day before, there were still reports that it's going to be cross-safe with everybody but Sony. So they must have pulled that out at the last minute. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think it was even on like a like a asterisk on the bottom of the stream, on the Stadia stream, uh, like pending Sony's cooperation or something. Like something so <laughs> yeah. blatantly. Yeah, A like little bit some, of peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. like little building blocks that just poke at Sony, like crossplay, crossplay, crossplay. Like Fortnite kind of started that when they opened up crossplay for everything. Except for between the consoles, uh, and then now we have like Call of Duty that's going crossplay. Yeah. I think, mm-hmm. right? yeah, and uh, Stadia and just everything else. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and this won't be quite crossplay. I don't think like you won't be able to play across systems, but you can save across systems. So I could go jump on the Xbox to play some Destiny Two with Joe, and then continue that same character on the PC mm-hmm. later. So it's like um, a half it's, step. It's yeah, they called it cross save, which is mm-hmm. you know, a step in the right direction. Of course, Stadia would yeah. be cross. Well, Stadia is just a Stadia. I guess is cross-platform. It doesn't really have a platform. So, uh, but it is it is kind of cool, and I'm excited. And uh, that announcement cost me yet more money because for some silly reason I decided to order the the collector's edition, which comes with I'm not even sure what some sort of metallic tool from <laughs> Shadow Keep. I don't know. I paid is fifty dollars in shipping. Is it to go with your your BB that you're going to strap to your chest for Death Stranding? I'm not buying that. That's not entering my house. <laughs> you're not. You're not <laughs> buying the it. Line somewhere. I need to sleep here. <laughs> Laren and I are shipping it to you. <laughs> yep. you're, you're going to the other side, whether you like it or not. That yeah. should not make it through customs. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Should so, but, not. But might. Should not. Yeah, probably would. So that's coming out. It's coming out in September. So which has it's it's literally coming out like four or five days after Borderlands Three. So that's gonna be crazy time for anybody that enjoys this genre. Uh, let's face it, a lot of Destiny players are probably drawn to Borderlands 3 because it's similar in nature. Sure. So, I don't know how, like, I need more vacation time so I can take more time off to play <laughs> games. Yeah, the uh, fall is definitely getting backloaded with games again. Yep, it is. I think this year it was February, it was like the new November, but... <laughs> Everything that missed the previous November got pushed into February. Yeah, I think Red Dead sort of forced everybody to want to come out later. Uh, so that's the reason for the whole February has a million games thing. But yeah, definitely looks like fall. We're going to have to save some money for all these releases. Yep. Um, Shadow Keep, fortunately, is only $35, I think, because it is basically just an expansion. It does require the base game. Um, but again, the base game could now technically be free at that point. So it's cool. So how much would you have to would would you just put on that expansion or do you have to get all the ones prior to it? I'm I don't believe you have to get all the expansions. I think you can kind of pick and choose. I don't know how they're going to handle content because a lot of it overlaps or builds on top of each other. So some of that still seems to be a little bit unclear. I wouldn't be surprised if their desired path is you get the the base stuff for free and then you just you buy $40 a year for a expansion with an annual pass you know so that it's basically 40 bucks a year you you buy this stuff i don't know what happens if you miss stuff i could imagine that a few years down the road they will make a bunch of the other content free again like they always sort of backfill stuff into the free version you know like that Mm -hmm. kind of makes sense to me there's some other games that follow that same model where like the base content is free and then you buy for bonuses and additional newer stuff so but it's exciting i'm exciting uh it's september i'm excited rather um (laughs) september 17th is when it comes out so it's going to be busy. Lots and uh, I think it was Bill pointed out that he told me, like, damn it, they did it again. They sucked me in, and I'm excited for this. So <laughs> I've just given up. It's just easier. Accept it. Yeah, let it, let it wash over you, Jan. Yeah. Like the tar in Death Stranding. We're going to keep getting back to that. <laughs> I still don't know what you that's that about. <laughs> we'll All right. That soon. So a uh, couple more uh, game announcements that came out. Uh, this one you're excited about, Laren, and that's Darksider Genesis. Yes. was revealed. Tell us about that. Um, so it's a new ARPG, uh, Diablo-style 
version of the game, which is very different from the previous Darksiders games. Uh, and it follows the fourth, I guess, final horseman of the Apocalypse, Strife, who we haven't had a playable as a playable character yet in any of the games. Uh, and also it's going to feature War, who is the main protagonist in the first game. Uh, so given that this all takes place prior to the events of pretty much all of the games, it's it's a prequel, whether they said it or not, I don't know if they specifically said it, but they did specify that it's like before the events of the main saga. Um, so there's going to be co-op, which is very interesting because back in the day when they first released the, I think it was Darksiders 1, uh, the developers really wanted to go in the direction of four-player co-op, and then they never got to do that because THQ went bankrupt, uh, Vigil Games went under because of that, they sort of dispersed, and now... Uh, some of the original developers are at Airship Syndicate. They're going to be working on on this game instead of Gunfire Games. And they've incorporated co-op, which is interesting because it's also coming out on the Stadia. And like we were saying, um, having Stadia for, for co-op should be really fun and interesting. And it allows for more people to get into the into the genre. So I'm really excited. I, I think it looks good. The, the, more, the more these co-op games come out, the more I feel an appreciation for what Google's trying to do. Yeah. Because no longer do you have to worry about it. You can just be like, this game looks cool. My buddy would like that. Yeah, you know, usually we'll that's my, my first worry is like, oh, it has co-op, but I have no one to play with because for whatever reason, most of my friends are console players and I'm a PC player. So I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing. If Google Stadia does not have gifting, they will have missed a huge opportunity because um, I'm sure they probably will. I mean, they have a buddy pass, but like, I want to be able to buy this game and three months of Stadia or whatever mm -hmm. for a friend. You know, could you imagine that? You just give it to them. Right. I guess they need a control. No, they don't need a controller. It will work with um, the mouse and keyboard and other controllers as well. So. Or, or on mobile, right? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. going to be playing games. The <laughs> humanity will stop being productive. Yeah. <laughs> My mom's going to be on, like, <laughs> like, Watch Dogs 3, just, like, hacking everybody. You can see it now. Oh, God, in Call of Duty now, that actually was your mom in that. Never mind. That was her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Was that a your mom joke? <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible attempt at one. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, but no, it 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 does look. I've never played uh, any of the Dark Siders games, and again, anytime something's co-op, I I get a little bit more interested in it than if it if I'm left to my own devices. So yeah. So part of why this particular uh, direction for the game is so perfect is because Strife is a gunslinger, and that's how he is in the lore. Uh, but we've never actually seen him with any sort of hands-on gameplay, uh, and since the Darksiders series is mostly a hack-and-slash uh, genre game, people were wondering, well, how are you going to incorporate Strife? Because he just dual-wields pistols, so where's the hack-and-slash in that? Um, so having it be a sort of top-down ARPG like, makes total sense, so I think it's going to work really well. And they do have a panel scheduled. I'm just looking at the uh, the news yes. post you wrote at GuideStash uh, last week or a few days ago. Um, yeah, Thursday, so... so. That's going to be, yeah, on Thursday. They kind of, like, half teased that they were going to reveal a game, and so everybody had a feeling that it was going to be Genesis, because, again, about three months ago, the name Darksiders Genesis was leaked by their own PR company. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, that was a whole other debacle, where they had a had that AMA on 8chan, and that's yes, where it was uh, revealed. Yes. On accident, The the one of the actual THQ people posted a whole list of all the things that were coming to E3 before they actually announced it. So that's that's how people knew about, um, what was it, Destroy All Humans? And right, right. and this, Dark Side of Genesis. Uh, so it, it's basically just been like, okay, when are you going to reveal it? Is it today? Is it tomorrow? Is it next week during E3? No, it's now. Um, mm -hmm. So it, they sort of took the wind out of their own sails on that one. But I would so hate to, to be working in the marketing departments of these companies now because they go probably through a lot of effort to, you know, prepare these release uh, trailers and, and events and stuff. And there have been so many leaks this year mm -hmm. from, well, I mean, in this case, their own PR firm is kind of a, a <laughs> extra awkward. But, you know, whether it's been retailers or store listings that appear temporarily. And the thing is, people see it. It, it is no longer, uh, you can no longer just accidentally have a page go up on Steam in the store for an hour. You know, someone will see it, screenshot it, it will be on Reddit and everywhere online. And and it's once the cat's out of the bag, I, you're almost right. They just have to kind of push up their schedule and say, you know what? Fine, let's just do the release now. We'll tell everybody about it. At least that way you can control the message a bit. Oh, mm -hmm. scary, scary. We were working on a on a game site six to eight months ago. Um, 
in advance of it being announced and i like made a rule to myself that i wouldn't change the to and from on email threads period i would not change whoever was on the thread was staying on the thread if anybody else wanted to share that thread with someone else it was their problem and that was my my uh my i don't know personal commitment to trying not to mess anything up because i mean i'm even surprised that doesn't happen more it you s- simply type like the wrong tom when you're adding mm-hmm. someone to a thread and and you know all hell breaks loose yep um Okay, so one last thing we can touch on real quick. Um, according to Jason Schreier over at Kotaku, Blizzard has canceled supposedly a planned StarCraft first-person shooter in order to focus on Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. I'm not a huge StarCraft fan. I don't really care about Overwatch 2. I do want to play Diablo 4, so in my book, this is the right way to go. <laughs> Clearly, you should focus on Diablo 4, the game I want to play the game you want to play am i the only one i know i'm not it's a weird way to phrase that we all remember starcraft ghost from like early aughts right i do yeah uh like the i get, it was a real thing am, am i wrong it was a real thing that they just never got to the finish line of uh the ghost you know putting their laser pointer at a building to drop a nuke from the original starcraft put into like a story driven first person shooter i feel like it was fleshed it out was... enough that people knew about it yeah, I think it was properly like marketed. It, it, it did end up being canceled, but it was not like a, um, a secretive thing. Like, there's quite a bit of information. Just doing a quick uh, wiki search. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so that's the only reason I disagree, and that would have been the preferred release for Joe Stasia. But yeah, hmm. I mean, in, in terms of like gross sales, I'm sure they picked the right two games out of the three. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure that doesn't mean that there won't be any uh, future StarCraft games. It just means that right now, you know. I mean, Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2, that's that's no small tasks. No. So, um, by the way, and I just noticed this, the one thing that I didn't have in the show notes and then I didn't mention to you guys, but did you hear about the another leak, the From Software game with George R. R. Martin? Oh, yeah. I heard about it, yeah. So, I, I'm trying to f- remember the... Hello, cat. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling she was going to Your cat out. is excited about Elden Ring. Yeah, which is coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So, Elden Ring, huh? Elden Ring, yes. And then this is the game that's, you know, obviously George R. R. Martin, the creator of Game of Thrones and a uh, story of Ice and Fire, is working in collaboration with From Software, the makers of Dark Souls and Sekiro, which we talked about not too long ago. Hmm. So th- there's no um, no information yet. This was, uh, you know, another leak. This time it was a security flaw on Bandai Namco's website yeah, that I'm revealed sure. this leak in addition to two <laughs> other ones. Um, speaking of your work on websites, Joe, that's probably another nightmare if you're working on some oh, sort of staging yeah. thing or or Yeah, thankfully, or whatnot, uh, thankfully I'm not doing any of the, the uh, back-end stuff. That's someone else's fault. the same fault. thing happened with Sims yesterday. Yep, the Sims oh, 4. So Bill was right. Island Living expansion was leaked. Mm. Um, it made it really difficult to create E3 bingo cards that didn't have stuff on them that we already knew. Exactly. In fact, mine is already out of date because um, Watchdog Legions was officially confirmed by Ubisoft earlier today. So hmm. that's yeah. not even a prediction anymore. But I didn't bother taking it off. So mine's uh, already incorrect now because I said that From Software would skip this year. And <laughs> <laughs> whoops. Well, I mean. I don't know if we're going to hear more about this from them at E3. Technically, this isn't a an E3 appearance. A leak does not count as E3 participation. You're right, but I'm confident I'm still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it does it does kind of seem like they will reveal this. It's uh, if they don't now, I feel like somebody should be scrambling right now to try to get George R. R. Martin down to L.A. <laughs> and just just pick a booth somewhere, but you got to make some official announcement now. <laughs> sure, sure. Ugh. So Elden Ring. Um, obviously don't know much about it. I think the, the, uh, the logo was leaked as well. Uh, have you guys seen that? <laughs> yeah. Which means like, it's most definitely happening. The yeah. logo was leaked. Come on. I, I don't know what that, what to expect from this, but I mean, I can, I mean, if you picture George R. R. Martin working with the Dark Souls guys, you can kind of come up with an image in your head as to what this game's going to be like. Yeah, totally. And it's in my head. It's awesome. So. <laughs> I hope it's not going to be too difficult because I want to play this one. And I would be upset if I had to spend six hours learning how to beat a boss. Right. But we'll see. I'm sure that that will be the case, though. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the game that gets me into trying to play this kind of game. So. Yeah, we're we're going to find out probably before Monday. Yep, I hope so. Um, we're we're going to talk a lot of again again next episode about what we actually did officially see. So uh, moving into official 
E3-related news, EA Play happened this morning, as I alluded to earlier. And so they announced a couple of things. Nothing, no real big things, to be honest. Sims 4, Island Living, at Laren, as you just said, it was leaked, then confirmed. You can now walk around the beach, you can clean up the beach, you can play on the beach, you can walk into the water and play in the water. So, it, I mean, it's it's Sims 4, right? At the beach. At the beach. <laughs> yeah. I, looks cool. Yeah, it looks fine. It looks like... I mean, if you're a fan of The Sims, I'm sure it's but awesome. But it's not Sims 5, and I, I Correct. mentioned a few minutes ago that Bill was right, getting my numbers mixed up, but he said Sims 5 was coming, and we didn't Yeah, he was that. thinking a full new game, and okay. at the time I asked him, it's like, are you sure? Because I feel like they're just going to keep rolling on this train. So, well, But that's coming. They also uh, talked about sports games, FIFA and Madden. I don't. Are any of you guys big into those? No. Nope. No. Okay, but we probably, I mean, it's the same, right? It's FIFA 20, um, new, <laughs> improved ball mechanics, which I chuckled at, but they've they've completely <laughs> reworked the ball in FIFA 20. Um, <laughs> but you didn't think you were going to say that? Today? No, I did not. <laughs> Madden 20 has some new super activities or super skills for some of the superstars. Um, it all looks cool. Like, if you're into those games every year, you know, the next FIFA game. The one that they didn't mention, which they never do, is uh, NHL 20, which is undoubtedly coming. But uh, that's, I mean, me being a Canadian hockey fan, that's the one I would be interested in. But didn't Well, talk about that. they also didn't mention, I'm seeing, they also didn't mention NBA Live 20. Is that still around this series? Well, it came out last year, I think. Okay. So I feel like that's always been in the shadow of NBA 2K. Well, not always. Oh, do we need to start this conversation? My, <laughs> my poor, poor NBA Live, my, my... My child, it's like a child to me that just didn't didn't succeed at life or something. I don't know what the metaphor. Is. I'm I'm not a big basketball fan, so I never really paid much attention to the NBA Live series. But I am hopeful that by the time this podcast is released, Canada will have its first NBA champion ever. Yeah, with the Raptors yeah. defeating the Golden State Warriors on Monday night. I'm just going to predict that that happened. <laughs> well said, some basketball fan man. You know all the things, and it's on ABC <laughs> presented by YouTube TV. <laughs> like a walking poster. I just know it's Monday because I want to know when the country comes to a standstill so I yeah. can prepare myself. <laughs> let, let me let me offer a little bit of advice to you, someone who doesn't obviously care much about basketball. Just tune in and watch Kawhi Leonard work his magic. That guy's out of his mind. If you don't like yeah. watching him play basketball, then yeah, you don't like the sport. No, you're right. I mean, I have I have watched a little bit, and he's uh, amazing this yeah. year for sure. And that is it is exciting. Um, you know, I've total tangent but i'm i'm a big believer in like i like seeing different teams succeed in leagues whether it's football baseball any of the sports really mm -hmm. uh, you know variety and you know i feel like golden state has golden state and cleveland for the past few years it's been those two right so i it's great that toronto's having success yeah 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 they're the they're the bad guys now it's time to move on yeah Okay, so uh, they talked about Apex Legends and Battlefield Five. Nothing earth-shattering coming there. I haven't touched Battlefield Five in a long time, but they are going back to the Pacific in the fall, which is kind of exciting. Um, I guess I own the game. I just uninstalled it the other day because it kept downloading 40 gig patches every once in a while when I open up Origin. I figured that's not necessary. Um, but Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, that's what they led off with, and I think it's probably the game that we're most interested in. Joe, you reviewed the... Gameplay footage, almost 14 minutes that they released today, uh -huh. just before the show. What are your thoughts on Jedi Fallen Order? All right. I don't want to be pessimistic, and I don't want to take the wind out of yours or Laren's sails. And I I am purely just giving a gut reaction and saying this doesn't look ready to release to me. Looks a little uh, rough around the edges, specifically in the animations. I am not someone who is like... Uh, a graphic slut or something, whatever the term is. I'm not really saying that I care so much about that, but it just looks a little bit janky, unpolished, what have you. Um, and to be honest, I'm just surprised that that's what I came away with from uh, the Titanfall dev, uh, the Titanfall devs take on Star Wars. I was kind of, I was kind of, I kind of had it in the bank that that side of things would be great, and mm -hmm. it would be just a matter of like if the gameplay was compelling or something like that, just because it's Star Wars and uh, there's a lot riding on that IP. Like you, you better handle it right. You know, so it's not, it's not a given that, that the game would be outstanding. I just thought that the production values would be a no brainer. So I'm surprised that that's my takeaway, but 
uh maybe maybe that's just me what did laren what did you think about like just strictly how it looked i'm inclined to agree there wasn't a whole lot of wow factor there in terms of visuals um especially like you said with a with such a big ip you have to really bring it and i don't think they did uh you know we're in a time where we have games like god of war and it looks amazing you know and because this game happens to look also pretty linear, whether it is or not, uh, you gotta also deliver in the in the wow factor to keep things interesting. And I don't think they really did that. Right, and especially during the one segment of the footage they show where you're like, you go into that like canned animation of like crawling through a tight crevice, which like Tomb Raider does and like <laughs> Uncharted does and God of War did. It's it's almost like a staple of that third person action yeah. and, and action adventure genre. Um, to me, like that scre- that moment scream like, okay, it's one of those games. And um It's it's that and shimmying along a ledge on a wall. <laughs> yeah. Those are the two things. <laughs> right, right. Um yeah, for anybody who's curious about what uh yeah, I guess we're saying, just look at the vine in the in the early early moments of the footage. There's a vine that the character swings from and there's just something about it that doesn't look right. I can't believe it. It just doesn't look right. I know, Laren, you were saying you were upset about um, the lack of like limbs falling off, and I'm wondering if that yeah, maybe, maybe that's I, like I mean, a rating issue. I expected issue. to be a little more graphic, I guess. Yeah. Um, when you're swinging a lightsaber at somebody or through somebody, they should be cut into pieces, I would think. Maybe not blood squirting because it would cauterize, I would imagine, but uh, <laughs> just, just something a little bit more <laughs> um, like I guess violent, just because it would make more sense with what you're actually doing to these people, because it looks like you're. In the, in the footage, that the character is just kind of smacking people with a stick, and then they fall on the ground, and I guess they're dead or something. Uh, but it's kind of jarring to to not see the lightsaber actually like cutting through anybody. It does really look a little bit much. like he's just wielding one of those plastic light up props. Yeah, it you does. You just smack him with a plastic stick. Yeah, which can like I said, be a little jarring when you're playing. It kind of takes you out of the the feel of being an actual force wielding person. Um, I did like how. Uh, the character can kind of slow down time or slow down certain things in time, uh, like a, a laser coming at him, being shot from someone's gun. And then he he grabs a person with the force and brings them in front of that slowed down bullet and kills them with it. <laughs> it's like actually pretty cool. Um, so, so some of that stuff was interesting, but I think overall they're playing it really safe. Uh, yes. And- in terms of like just just everything you're doing in it and it just wasn't super impressive right and i think for me the the best example of the safeness that that was evident is that you're fighting big giant spiders it's almost like it's almost like a generic rpg like first mission and mm-hmm. the only reason that's kind of like a red flag for me is because like you're a jedi like you're already a jedi you already have the saber in this footage I don't know, like, I think, like, a couple, like, one, two swipes at this fleshy, gross spider, and it's done. <laughs> like, I don't understand right. what this spider's defense is that it, that you're, has, like, a health bar that you're whacking away at. It didn't, it's almost like, uh, yeah, it's almost as if you were you were swinging, a, like, a iron sword or something. It, it just something didn't click in terms of that powerfulness that I think you should have if you're a Jedi or a Jedi in training or whatever. So, surprisingly... The graphic stuff didn't really hit me as much until he pointed it out, but maybe it is related to them switching to or using the Unreal 4 engine as opposed to, say, Frostbite or something, which ironically, I actually think Frostbite would have worked well for this, but, you know, like a story, sort of more linear experience. Mm-hmm. But it, it's it's interesting. The one thing that confused me was that my previous thought was that you're playing as Cal, who is a, a Force-sensitive Jedi and and I guess maybe this demo takes place later on in the in the game, but I, you know what we've seen before was him on the run from the Empire, and you know not really broadcasting that he's a Jedi because they're hunted and extinct. And yet the the footage they showed literally starts off with somebody yelling "Jedi over here" across <laughs> this wide open expanse. I'm like, okay, that's clearly not the same kind of situation anymore where we're just keeping this on the down low. The whole Jedi thing, shh, you know, that obviously had changed by that point, but. Right. What do you guys think of the droid? Because um, I feel like BD1, Buddy Droid 1, is Cal's companion. Sits on his back a lot. It's yeah. like a backpack droid. Um, Got to have one of those, right? I feel like every Star Wars, whether it's a movie, every, game, anything new. Every third person action game in the past 10 years just has like a, like Assassin's Creed has a hawk. God of War has a young child. <laughs> like, 
There's always like, <laughs> there's always like right. some mechanism that just does the dirty work for you because it would be too hard to program <laughs> into the main character. You know, like there's someone doing like the intricacies of someone like uh, code breaking a door in this case, probably stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like just kind of a mandate at this point. Um, I don't know that I like it or dislike it. It just seems like it needs to be there. So we'll see if, there, if there's going to be any changes to address some of these concerns you guys have. The game is coming out on November 15th, which is not really all that far away. I feel like I feel like this cannot m- miss. Like EA, aside from Apex Legends, which was a hit at the start and has kind of fizzled since then, but they need something good and solid. And, you know, obviously Star Wars being the brand that it is, you can't mess this up. This has to mm-hmm. be good. Yeah, but they can. They can mess it up. Because they have messed up Star Wars even very recently up. And so it's not out of the question. Uh, that being said, I just want to make it clear. I'm rooting for Fallen Order. I want it to be good. Um, and I'm hopeful. And that's how I feel. All right. So shall we talk a little bit about our predictions for E3 now that we've sort of dissected everything that's happened in the past two or three days? Seems like a lot more, but um, we created our bingo cards. And who wants to start? Do you guys want to just kind of highlight some of your? Do we need to talk about how this works? Do people understand that you know these are essentially predictions, and as they come true, you check off a box, and your goal is to try to get a bingo, aka a, a straight or diagonal connected line of predictions that have come true? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my qu- quick hot take on this whole thing is that it's. We, we should have a better system for predictions because if you want to win the bingo game, if that's the goal here between, you know, uh, our little group here, man, it would be so easy to win the bingo game because then you just write Luigi's Mansion 3 coming to Nintendo Switch, uh, Astral Chain trailer dropping on Tuesday morning during the Nintendo Direct, whatever. Like, I, it was almost like, do I want to make this card that I'm making interesting or do I want to win? And I, and I chose to not win. <laughs> <laughs> Good, because there is no prize. Yeah, it doesn't okay. matter. Right. So my, my point I'm making, we can come up with I think a better system next year because I do not feel incentivized <laughs> through the normal bingo motivations to really participate in this game. That being said, uh, I have some some little delightful nuggets to share with you. Um, right. Why don't you start us off? Then I can do that. What's yeah. one of the like, okay? You picked. So what you basically what you're saying is you you try to stay away from the safe. That's the safe predictions. There's a couple safe ones uh, sprinkled in just to fill space because it was hard to come up with 25 different hot takes. But yeah, yeah I, I didn't. I didn't do 25 easy soft takes. Okay, why don't we? Why don't we start with some of your hot takes then? All right, hot takes is uh, the new Xbox console will be announced, which I think is a safer bet. But they will say that it is called simply Xbox, and they will get into like that ubiquitous thing and make it sort of like a fluid platform i like that thanks and i i could see that actually you know that that does kind of make sense the whole x cloud thing and them wanting it to be more of a service right makes sense to me yes i didn't say it as elegantly as you just did but i that's what i was thinking well Uh, and also they've kind of painted themselves into a corner what what could they call it I mean, they already well, went from Xbox to Xbox 360. Then they didn't do the 720. They went to Xbox One. Like, what, Xbox Two? No. <laughs> no. I do <laughs> like that about them. That I, I mean, PS2, 3, 4, 5, that's all safe and fine and makes sense. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very on brand, I think, for Sony's sort of stiffness. But uh, as much as Xbox is a Microsoft product and therefore it really can't be that cool of a thing <laughs> because Microsoft is boring and and uh, corporate and blah 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 which they need to be xbox is sort of like the punk rock uncle in (laughs) in the uh in the you know in the pool here so uh, i do expect them to uh, again not adhere to any sort of naming convention and uh, yeah if i had to guess they're just going to strip it completely and go back to the original cool i'll buy that uh okay so i'll I'll give you a few more i don't want to hog we we definitely can go round robin but i'll give you one more and then i'll pass the pass the mic here um i'm gonna say a real car appears on the xbox stage a little safer of a bet but i think they did skip last year i'm I'm thinking it comes back this year a real car perhaps even a mclaren is on the xbox stage (laughs) perhaps even so you get bonus points if you get the brand of the car the make of the car right as well so (laughs) Yeah, that might be a that might also be a safe call at this point. They tend to do that. I will say that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Larry. I might have mixed these links up, but you also have a fancy car to promote the next. Forza. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I didn't specify the car though. I guess I could just pull one. <laughs> why, out why'd of you, the air. Yeah, pick one. <laughs> We've got McLaren. Uh, it's Joe's bet. <laughs> 
God, I'm trying to remember the ones they already did because they probably won't do that again. Um, Lamborghini? I don't know. I'm not a car person. Sure. I will... I will just to throw my two cents in the ring. I won't specify brand, but I'll think I'll predict it's an electric one. Ooh, very high oh, tech. Like a Tesla? Not necessarily. It could be a, a, a some sort of electric Porsche or something. Ooh. Yeah, I could see okay, that for sure. Well, I'll go Lamborghini, I guess. Um, <laughs> are we are we moving on to my card now? Yes. Please. Yeah. Why don't you tell us uh, one of your? Okay. Uh, well, this is more of a mild take, not so much a hot take. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 3 teaser, but I'm realizing now that that's probably not going to happen because yesterday the community manager for Garden Warfare 2 said that they're not going to be at EA Play. So that would have been the time that they would have released a teaser, I think. Even even if it's not part of the main live stream, I think they would have did it then. I'm still holding out hope that maybe they will because they, they did confirm they're working on one. Could do it during Microsoft's conference. Yep. Yeah, possibly. So I, I left it on there just because I'm like, well, there's still a shred of hope for the, the broader conferences. So maybe that. Um, let's see what else. I had next-gen console details. That's playing it super safe. <laughs> <laughs> somebody <laughs> so, will talk about new hardware. Yeah, somebody's trying, trying to win. win. Okay, Bang, no, bingo, yeah. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. A live musical performance on stage, perhaps? Because there seems to be a lot of that, even though, well, that was more of like Sony did that that one year. So it was and Bethesda did it last year. <laughs> Andrew WK came on stage last year, I think. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Oh Bethesda, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, still a possibility. Yep. Um, I think Minecraft Earth. I feel like they're gonna show something, or they should during Microsoft. Um, so I, I went with Minecraft Earth live demo. Yeah, since. you called it that. Um. I also mentioned a Minecraft Earth demo, and Joe, you took it a step further, and you oh, said yeah. it goes live on the App Store during E3. Yes, and I have so reason for saying take. that. Yeah, I, I have reason. That. Because what better way than making like West Hall like a massive... Uh, yes. right? Oh my gosh, that would actually be really fun. Now I wish I was there. Ugh. Now, uh, we don't I, even know if this I, is happening. I've, but. I've only been to one E3, but the one thing that would have made my experience worse is having people... St- Stop walking in hallways. Oh, they do that anyway. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, they're hard. But that's I'm, usually because I was running also. from one appointment to the other, and it's like people are just yeah. sauntering around, enjoying the experience. I'm like, get out of my way! I'm late. <laughs> yeah, they have all these signs saying like, "Don't do that," but people do it anyway. Yep. And if you're short like me, I'm five two, and so I can't really navigate through people as easily because no one even sees me coming until I'm like, "Get out of my way." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can see how that would be annoying, but also cool. I think. Would be cool. Um, Based on nothing, though. I'm just got you know, I, I doubt that will happen. Yeah, yeah. Long shot, but it would still be awesome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, let's. I put Dragon Age 4 just because it's a thing <laughs> that is was it? supposed I, to be I happening. To, oh, that would be cool. I think, right? It, or, it is a thing. I don't know. Did they announce it's that? A, I feel like they did. They didn't. I don't think they officially announced that there may have been oh, like some didn't. tweets saying that they're shifting development to a new Dragon Age. Something in that language, but it's right. the okay. series so that, is being worked it's on. It's not fully confirmed, but... I could be wrong about that, but they did, like, it is definitely being worked on in some form. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I put some sort of dancing during Ubisoft because there's always, like, a dance number. Oh, yeah. You really are trying to win this bingo game. <laughs> <laughs> You've already got I'm an disorder. athlete making an appearance. That happened today at EA Play. Oh, see, I didn't even watch that part, so do so I get to check that one off? You can check that one off already. We will go through next week and, and actually, you know, check everything off and see where we're at. But um, I see a lot of things that that could be checked off so that that would be cool um i'll, I'll give you one of my hot takes that yes, I'm, where I'm kind of fighting against myself um i have a feeling even though i really don't want this to come true but i have a feeling that whatever we're going to see of the new avengers game is going to look awful okay um like it just won't look good i want Square it to be Enix, right or yeah i don't know hmm. why i have that feeling but superheroes and games just are not a combination that have worked well in the past well right. notable uh, exceptions the Spider-Man. Ga- games need to have limitations and challenge and superheroes eliminate that so it's just plus very- this is supposed to be some sort of co-op multiplayer game so now you have multiple superheroes and how do you grow how do you, you know destiny 2 has loot borderlands 3 has loot you you change your character you grow you change your appearance how do you do that if you're playing as the hulk hmm yeah you know like at some point the variety of torn shorts I don't know. You, there's limitations. <laughs> you could have that. like so, a rain, rainbow afro or something. I guess. But that, again, terrible. So maybe if that is how they're going to solve it, I think that will be terrible. <laughs> yeah. So. Bathrobe? I don't know. <laughs> God, yeah. 
Um, I think, I mean, I did put something about a new Xbox. I was being much more vague and, you know, just said that there would be a new one. It seems super safe and kind of dumb. But I think there will be a new Nintendo Switch announced. Ooh. You think so? I don't yeah. think so. I don't know why. I mean, I have no, I have no reason to believe that. It's just a feeling. But I think they said like that they wouldn't. Like an upgraded version of the Switch? I've heard some rumors about potentially a Joy-Con-less version, one that has less moving parts and it's cheaper. Right. So either the Joy-Con's controls are like built in and are not removable and it's, you know, or it just doesn't have those and it's essentially a, uh, just a, a, a dockable only one. I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but something like that. Like a I Nintendo think, Switch Lite. I think you're right about that thing coming into reality. I just don't think they'll be talking about it this week. Yeah, that it could very well be. Um, some of us, I think, mentioned the George R. R. Martin game, which has already come true. Yeah. Whoops. So, actually, you said the opposite, Joe. <laughs> I did. You said it would not happen, but yep. you could still technically be right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because they may not announce it, right? You said right. they wouldn't announce it. Yeah, and the George R. R. Martin uh, rumor has been around longer than just like recently, right? That's been a couple yeah. weeks now. Um, so that's what I was basing that opinion off of but yeah i mean yes. I, I i i instantly take it back after reading that uh kotaku story it looks like it's definitely happening you also picked uh that bethesda would show a elder scrolls 6 cinematic trailer i i said it would have a elder six scrolls teaser so teaser. we've got same same thing right that. is that that teaser meaning just like i mean a little of... bit more than the teaser they showed us last year i mean last year they showed us like a logo a logo yeah that doesn't really count i could have drawn that i think they have to show something because after trotting out fallout 76 which looks like a game that launched in 2007 mm -hmm. i feel like their claims of elder scrolls 6 being on this like new and improved engine and like changing bethesda from the inside out <laughs> i mean this is the year they need to show that they're moving forward with tech and th that would be a good way to do it if indeed what they said is to be trusted which that's a whole different topic yes all right. Um, let's see. Does anybody else have something on here that stands out? Uh, yes, I do. I'm I'm thinking to piggyback off the Stadia thing. Xbox adds Destiny Two to Game Pass. Hmm. The free version or the so, whole thing? So the free version that you've been talking about on this podcast, I was not aware of. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so I don't know. So I guess not. I don't know. But maybe maybe yeah, something that is paid for Destiny 2 comes to Game Pass in some form, something like that. Yeah, they could, for example, release everything that's available up to this point, which is a little bit more than what's coming to the, the free version. Yes, and I think that the reason to me that makes sense is because um, ahead of this new uh, console announcement, I think they'll want to have as large a subscriber base as possible for this new console so that you can play all of your current Xbox One games on the new system that will be backwards compatible. Like, I think they're just trying to, like, butter everybody up for this next thing they're doing. And that would be a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm looking at this, and you're going to have to explain this one to me because I'm missing the connection, and it could be really obvious, but maybe I'm drawing a blank. But you've got one on here that says Ubisoft trots out a real soccer player on their stage. <laughs> Why would they do that? <laughs> <laughs> or is that just a random... <laughs> Insert random developer, insert random sport. <laughs> no, no, I meant to put EA. Okay. <laughs> well, that did yeah. not happen. But I, if this happens now, that would be amazing, especially <laughs> if that completes like a line on here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So like like if, if Ubisoft acquires, uh, I don't know the, I don't know the competing. One of the football games. manager, 2020. Yeah. And then they trot out Pele. <laughs> That would be a Ubisoft thing to do. <laughs> was, wait, wasn't it Pele last year for EA? Or who was Who was it that came? Even better, Laren. Yeah, <laughs> Pele has been around, whether last that's year. last year or... Yeah, yeah. he has yeah. made appearances before. What a way to kick off a new franchise. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they're going to show probably more Last of Us Part 2, but then not give us a release date. Oh wait, who's going to show us that? Good question. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, so don't you think but that maybe Sony it'll will be also like have a, a Sony leak on here? Trailer. Yeah, no, I do think Sony's doing something this week. I think they got to stay in the in the conversation a little bit. No? You think they're just going to do like an a, an online stream, like a state of play type thing, some kind of reveal online? Well, I mean, are we past the point where they wouldn't 
uh, like would they have announced that by now i don't know maybe so so meaning maybe not maybe they won't but i i feel like it would be weird for them to totally skip this week where the entire industry is talking about the games that are coming to us in a matter of months I do think it's weird that they would skip that. Not that they need to physically be in LA. I don't think that matters, as we no. discussed. Nintendo is not really physically there this year, right? Uh, certainly less than usual, right? Mm-hmm. So you know what would be amazing if Sony pulled off like a real boss move, where on what's the last day of E3? Thursday, Thursday, Friday, mm-hmm. they re- they announce something big, sort of at the end of the show, like they do their own one more thing announcement where it's something to do with last of us two pl- running on the ps5 or something and oh. like actual visuals of the hardware something you know totally unexpected so kind of like forget about all the other stuff you saw here's sony's thing walking a fine line when everybody in the entire world that's covering the last of us is going to be in the air <laughs> oh, i would love to see the, the reactions <laughs> online though <laughs> journalists yeah i'm on plain <laughs> wi-fi i think sony just said something cool but i can't watch the video <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was wasn't it like rumored that they were gonna have a state of play this week leading up to E three, but then I guess that just never happened. Oh man, they really should do something. I didn't hear that rumor, but I, it does feel odd not having feel anything odd. from them. Yeah, I mean they're like they're the market leader too in terms of like uh, certainly obviously console uh, sales. So like they're a big chunk to not say anything this whole week. And I think PlayStation still has a presence at E three, right? Uh, it's just Sony's not doing a presser. I imagine I PlayStation was still there. Yeah, that must be true, right? I so, think, but I also don't. It's know. all very confusing. <laughs> Could be interesting. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, I wanted to. I'm going to look at uh, one of the bingo cards just here in closing that was sent in on Twitter from Dusty. I'm trying to see if one of these is. Um, he's got a couple funny ones in there. Someone has technical issues. That's a safe one. Yeah, very safe. Um, audience claps for too long i haven't seen i've seen the opposite at ea play today so we'll yeah. see <laughs> i put awkward silence during keynote yep uh, dusty's sandwich. got a bethesda fail which is probably the same thing <laughs> 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 i feel like bethesda for some reason seems to be the one that that always has like that awkward moment <laughs> during well, it's their todd press howard conference. it's like it's like uh, Todd Howard paints a self-portrait of himself silently for 90 minutes during the press <laughs> conference. <laughs> yeah, something weird's going to happen there. For sure. yeah. We didn't have the technology, and now we do. <laughs> yeah. And then he just paints himself. Yeah, I've never painted in my life, but thanks to machine learning. <laughs> Check this out. I'm now a cyborg. Yeah, he is the cyborg. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so... I think that's probably that's probably fine. There's lots of predictions, obviously. Again, by the time you're listening to this, a lot of this will have already happened because we'll, you know, so what do we got? We've got tomorrow on Sunday, we've got Microsoft and Bethesda's conference. Monday, I believe, is Nintendo Square Enix. There's actually a VR press conference, which I'm going to watch. It's from Upload VR. It's a website, so they're going to have some reveals. So I'm trying to get more into VR stuff again lately, and uh, I'm kind of hoping for some exciting stuff to come out of that. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not as big of a thing as Nintendo or Microsoft's conference, but still, it's nice to have sort of a dedicated um, platform for VR releases. So it's going to be a very busy few days. So by the time you're listening to this, um, I'm sure there's lots to digest, and I have a feeling that next episode we're going to have a ton of stuff to go over. Um, I almost wonder. I assume that Bill will be back at, with Among the Living next week. But I think we should try to get Laren back on next week as well, just because we need to, you know, we can't go and judge your bingo card without you here. That wouldn't be fair. <laughs> Got to decompress. We need closure, yeah. So, all right. Uh, until then, unless you guys have any final words, I think we're good here. We can get back to reading and see what we missed in the past hour and a half. Who knows what's happened now? Got to check Twitter. Might have Find some more leaks, I'm find sure. some more leaks. Something else might have happened. You can't blink right now. So, until next week... Thank you very much for listening. You can find us at pushtotalk.fm on the web. You can find us at pushtotalk.fm on Twitter, as well as all the other social media channels. We're on Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, Stitcher, Pocket Casts, anywhere you can find podcasts. Thank you very much for listening. We can't wait to find out who's right and who's wrong with our E3 2019 predictions. Please tune again next time. 